Python? The Gil removed a new compiler, opt parse deprecated. What the heck just happened to Python? Well, it turns out Python without the Gil for good. The Python, a new Python compiler. Pydantic 2 is getting usable. Pep 387 defines soft deprecation. Oh, girl, I've been... <laughs> Trust me, we've defined soft deprecation a while ago. While ago, Cython 3.0 releases with better pure Python support. PEP 722 dependency specification for single file scripts. Python VS support gets faster, or VS Code. Uh, I, sorry, sorry, I said that out loud. Python VS support gets faster. Paint in the terminal. There's a lot going on with Python. Okay, a lot is going down with Python. Python without the gill for good. We saw last month the global interpreter lock was the center of attention once again. This month it carried on to the point uh, then even Meta, Facebook's parent company, pitched in. If PEP 703 is accepted, Meta can commit to support in the form of three engineers, three engineer years on landing. No gill see Python. Wow, they're in. They want it. They want that bad. It's nice to have Python seeing more and more contributions from big companies that used it for their success. It's a huge contrast compared to 2010. Yeah, this is awesome. When people say that companies need to give back to open source, I think that I personally think that this is one of the best ways to do it. Dedicate engineering years because the real the real talk, like the real part of it is that sure handing out some money, giving some money will get somebody to be able to be paid some amount of money to help kind of contribute and make the project better, which I'm not saying don't do that. Do that. But it's best done via individuals because you don't want to be at the whims of companies. You want, I'd rather have a thousand individuals giving five dollars a month. Did you hear that? Don't forget about your blue crown. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, and have that work, but have big companies dedicate engineers, right? Because that means that engineer is well paid. They're going to try really hard. It's for their job. You know, it's going to be, it's going to be fantastic. The discussion culminated with an internal debate with uh, the core devs, which ended up with an official announcement announcement of PEP 703. The proposal that relit the fire uh, was going to be accepted after some details figured out. This means in the coming years, Python will have its gill removed. Okay, so global lock interpreter. Let's go. Here's the plan. In short term, unsupported experimental version of Python without the gill is published in parallel to the regular one. All right, 313, 314. Midterm, no gill version is marked as official supported, but is still just an alternative to Python with Gil. A target date is announced to make uh, it the default one. The default once. Uh, this will happen after the community has shown enough support for it and will take several years. Long term, no Gil becomes the default. Before this, the core devs can reverse the decision and abort the no Gil project if it proves to have bad ROI. Radio over internet. Everybody knows that. Okay, so that's kind of exciting. Like, I assume this will just make an incredible speed up for for the pythons right uh, yeah it's python 3 rollout again Py you know for all of python's downfalls one thing that i think I, I in some sense i can appreciate about it is that python says screw it we're gonna have major versions right or big changes i think there's something some things are good about that i will agree that never wanting your language to change after you've thoroughly made some mistakes maybe is you know because there's all those people that talk about rust too and they want Rust 2 because apparently it can make a lot of good changes to the compiler, greatly speed up things. Like if you could cut Rust comp compilation in half but have to do a major version, would you do it? Probably. I think a lot of people would be like, yeah, that seems extremely compelling to me. You know, Rust 2 would be exciting. Uh, the main reason for the two different builds is to manage the unknown unknowns. Indeed, nobody expects the no guild to break things, but with such a big project, you can never be sure. ABI compat is tricky, and new extensions need to be compiled explicitly against it for it to work. So there is a need for the community embracing it. Okay. Also, no guild compatibility extensions will work on the old interpreter, so you don't get into the situation like Python 3 code not working on Python 2. Okay, so, so that's good, right? That's good. That's the right, right? They learned. They learned not to fracture the ecosystem for multiple decades. That seems positive. In fact, Python code itself should not be affected and will work seamlessly on one or the other, albeit with threads limited to a single core. <laughs> Classic. Uh, let's see, LPython, the new Python compiler. I heard to skip this part. I hear it's boring, but we'll do it anyways. Uh, that's the news I didn't see coming. What's the deal with C Python, PyPy, MicroPython, Jython? Oh, man. If I had a dollar for every time I heard Jython, I'd have three dollars. Uh, we talked about Python compilers, and I thought I did a pretty good job about li uh, listing everything that mattered. Well, the team behind LPython decided to take this list and append on it. Same, yeah? No one has any idea what 
uh, Gil a very good replacement uh, in the browser? Oh, really? Is it? Uh, LPython is a new BSD3 compiler that takes Python code and translates it to the following LLVM, C, C++, or WASM. Oh, it, does, uh, it doesn't aim to compile the entire program, although it can, but rather like Numba in Cython to let you speed up numerical bottlenecks. Okay, cool. The benchmarks are very promising and the ability to switch ahead of time and just in time are, were very convenient. Oh, very cool. Uh, although you'll still need to uh, need the entire compilation chain installed on the machine. Classic. That's why we have Docker. That's why that one dev invented Docker. LPython likes raw Python code. You know you like your raw LPython. You know you like the raw Python. So if you call Python function inside your snippet, you must explicitly mark it as raw. Raw. It's just raw. It's just, it's just raw. It's just raw. Um, so you ruined it. Uh, so most likely you'll use it for very specific si snippets. Uh, Pydantic 2 is getting uh, usable. I've been pitching the coming version of uh, 2 of Pydantic for some time because I and many people use it a lot for data validation and schema definition. Oh, is Pydantic like a type system on top of things? Raw dog and Python. You know we got to do that. You know you got to do it every now and then, right? Also clip it. Uh, yes, it came uh, out of stable last month, but if you read the Relieving Your Python Packaging Pain, you know that I don't encourage people to use the latest version of anything except for testing and having fun. Yeah. Uh, it's a schema validation library. Oh, interesting, like Zod? Is it supposed to be some version like Zod? You can do the column voice. Yes, I can. <laughs> Smeagol! Smeagol! <laughs> Master! <laughs> Sorry, I don't know what's happening to me. Master! Master! It just, it just, it puts the Zod in. Canceled. We love it. Uh, anyways, uh, Pedantic 2.1 is released. The first wave of nasty bugs have been eradicated. The fast API announced support for Pedantic 2. It's since the biggest uh, driver of Pedantic 2 usage. Okay, Pedantic. PEP387 defines soft deprecation. Okay, this is what we need to know about. What the hell's soft deprecation? If you haven't read Victor Steiner's a blog yet, I encourage you to do so. It's technical and raw with a zero BS. It gives you a good view of what it happens inside the contrib contribution life of a core dev. Last article mentioned something I missed last month. Soft deprecation has been added to PEP 387, backwards compatibility policy. This document created in 2009 states how Python projects deals with deprecation and how it will contain the following. Soft deprecation can be used when using an API which should no longer be used to write new code, but it remains safe to continue using it in existing code. The API remains documented and tested, but will not be developed further. No enhancements. The main difference between soft and regular hard, <laughs> the we call it pick deprecation, he's always hard, uh, is that soft deprecation does not imply scheduling the removal of deprecated APIs. Okay. A soft deprecated API is in a zombie state to maintain the lie forever, but will never see any work. Okay, cool. By the way, uh, I don't know if you know this. Uh, I was recently using, I know, soft and hard at the same time. I want I want something soft that eventually becomes hard. Okay, we need a soft to hard roadmap. Like, what do we have to do to go from soft to hard? Real question. Okay, uh, I had a question, but now I forgot. Oh, yeah, by the way, I was playing with OCaml, and OCaml is really awesome. They have a really great, like, arc parse library. Just a bit more of that Smeagol impression. No, not going to do it. We'll have to wait. We're going to have to wait. Cython 3.0 released with better peer Python support. Cython, the most famous uh, Python compiler, released version 3. While the release comes with all sorts of improvement, one particular stands out. Cython always has limitations. It used a superset of Python to express some of its features. This is no more the, uh, this is no more the case. As the release notes, it should now be possible to express all Cython code and use all features in regular Python syntax. Okay. I assume this means it's like a go time, right? Sounded uh, just like your regular voice. Your Smeagol impression sounded just like your regular voice. Mm. There, see, there goes that emotional trauma again. Now I get to carry that around for a while. Joys. Uh, Smeagol camel. Uh, uh, Pept uh, 722 dependency specification for single file scripts. While there, uh, while the no guild topic was certainly still alive, and while the proposal of Pep 722 really heated things up. Oh damn! I bet you some people got up and shifted uncomfortably. The idea is to formalize the syntax in comments that, similar to Groovy's... Okay, first off, you should never cite Groovy. Okay, Groovy is... St I still hate Groovy. Uh, all my all my homies hate Groovy. Uh, between this and Mojo, Python is feeling relevant again. Yeah, I don't think Mojo's going to deliver anything. Honestly, I really don't think Mojo's going to deliver a lot. Um, the only reason why I say that is that 
You know, there's like this thing called C, and it can just like go into Python. Just like in it, and it's like fast. So when when Mojo does this a comparison showing that it can do loops faster, it's not really showing me it can do anything faster because ain't nobody, ain't nobody writing Python like that, okay? Ain't nobody doing that. Ain't, ain't no way. Ain't no way. The idea is to formalize the syntax, uh, syntax in comments that is similar to Groovy. <laughs> would allow expressing the dependency of a single script, taking the example from Pep itself. In order to run the script, you need the following uh, oh requirements. Oh, interesting. Oh, weird. The import lines are, oh, okay, semantic comments. Huh. Huh. Ha. Huh. Uh, which would be officially formalized uh, to be parsed by third-party tools. The concept is not new, and it looks like pip run already support running uh, scripts which you have dependency for. Okay. I mean, kind of cool, I guess, maybe. Dream beer, a uh, dream bird was renamed. What? The greatest language ever got renamed? Dream X? Is it Dream Dream X? Uh, let's see. Hold on. The pep. Let's see. The pep doesn't imply Python or pip are going to have to integrate with such features. It only is formalizing the syntax for now. But I have a good hope that this one has uh, several lone Python scripts lying around that would really benefit from this. Yeah, I, I could see this being really nice, especially if you can keep the env around in the future. Such a proposal could show demand for it, and years later. Uh, and a year and years later, <laughs> lead to pip adoption. <laughs> no, uh, npx influence the addiction or the addition of npm and create, which allows to fetch project templates from specific packages. Indeed, that was the most common use case for npx. Okay, interesting. Python VS Code support. Um, honestly, I don't care about Python uh, VS Code. I don't. And paint in the terminal. This is just so cool. It's a version of paint that runs in the terminal thanks to Python. Lib textual. But it's not going to change your life or anything. But wow. <laughs> okay. Maybe uh, maybe I need to do that. Maybe I need to try that out. I will try that out. What a great thing. Python. I, you know, it. I, I do love to see that Python is really, it's really going somewhere. Python, you know, that's really cool to see. Uh, I've always wished that I maybe spent more time in Python than JavaScript. I feel like there's two worlds that exist. There's those that do JavaScript and those that do Python. And they seem to have, like, two core audiences that just love it. You know what I mean? It's just, like, Pythonistas love Python. Typescripters love TypeScript. And there's, like, no in-between, right? If, if, you, if you like Python and, and TypeScript, you're, like, the devil in either of their, eye, uh, in either of their eyes. No, I know that you, there's middle ground exists, right? Us normal people just want something that works, right? Uh, make vote on what is worse, Python or JS package man management. I'm actually going to go with um, JS on this one, but let's find out. Which one Which one do you think? End poll. Uh, delete poll. Okay, well, we're going to have to refresh on this one. I work as a data engineer, so Python is mandatory. Yes, you have, must like Python if you're a data engineer. This is this is facts. Middle ground equals da Django. Da Django. All right, here we go. New poll. Uh, which package management is worse? Python, JavaScript. I'm going to throw C++ in there. Just to really F this entire poll up. Okay. I'm gonna, I just wanted to F it all up because I'm going to vote C++. You're probably thinking, what package management? Exactly. Get submodules. <laughs> C++ package management is called get submodules. Or apparently CMake claims that it can download. Apparently CMake claims that it can use GitHub to manage packages, which we all know is fake. It's called a make file, yeah, dummy. We all know that is fake. It's never been real. Okay. What is a package manager? <laughs> you know what? I love the fact that even with C++ in here ruining the poll completely... There are still at least more people that hate JavaScript than Python. That is incredible. That is incredible that you would vote for either of these two over this one, but the fact that JavaScript is still winning. Right? Just write everything from scratch. Just write, just, just include it. I do not like this music playlist we've been playing, but I just didn't want to change it. Uh, yeah, but more people know JS than Python. Is that true? Truly a prime stream. Absolutely. You got to do it. Pip is good. Is Pip good? I think the thing is, is that with the, with the advent of virtual env and all that, then yes. Then yes. Python, like Python's package management, I think is better. Anaconda is really nice. 
right? With with Venv, Venva, I think Python's amazing. Dino's good. D you shut your dirty Dino mouth. Don't you even try that. Okay, I'm glad that I screwed up that poll, but I'm glad that's uh, with JavaScript still failing. Python has some great ecosystem. It does. Anaconda is nice. My Anaconda I don't want none of, unless if you got packages, hun. Um, okay, well, there you go. Python. Hey, enjoy the Python. Ride the Python. Raw dog the Pythonogen. <laughs>